Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Well, today we're gonna jump on over to the computer and have a look at using template files to retain your styles on future books on LibreOffice. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tom Morosky. I'm an author and a technology consultant, and we are here today to teach you a little bit more about LibreOffice, some more advanced tools here that we have inside of this. And today we're going to be looking at templating, which is a very nice tool. It's going to allow you to keep the same styles and pass them across to other books. Now, this is particularly useful in my Kings of All Creation series. So Josiah's Sanctification is here. The other black one behind me there is called Hezekiah's Prayer. And I have five more books coming out in this series. So what we're going to do is if you flip through the book, you'll actually see we have some nice formatting uh, in our chapters uh, with custom fonts up here. We have some images. All of our uh, Bible fonts in there are its own special custom font. Uh, various headers, footers, page numbers, all that kind of stuff is all in here already. Now, what I ended up doing is I created this book and then I have a template file. So when I'm writing the next book, I can just write it out in a brief manuscript, whatever the general generic defaults are inside of the application. And then when I'm ready to send this guy over to the printer, I can just go click button, import templates, done. And the whole thing is pretty much formatted. I'm going to have to go through and make sure, you know, all the Bible verses are lined up right and things like this. Uh, but this is going to save a ton of time because I don't have to continue to redo the wheel. Also, if you are writing fiction, of course, I realize that's nonfiction. You're like, oh boy, I don't know if this is applicable to me. No, if you're writing a series and you want to keep the same general formatting, maybe you're doing something very unique in your formatting across the series. And you can maintain that by creating one template for your series and then just applying that to the next book and the next book and the next book. And then you can create a new template for your next series so that all of the books within a series are going to have a very similar stylistic feel to it. So that's our applications. And uh, we're going to look at readying the template. We're going to look at uh, adjusting the templating paths, and then we're going to look at saving your own custom templates and then importing them into the document. So let's head on over to the computer to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are over on the computer, and uh, what we're going to do is we are going to look at the book Josiah's Sanctification. So I'll go ahead and open this guy up. So this is the book, and you can see we already have our formatting styled to it. And inside of, we have our paragraph styles, we have our character styles. So here's our drop caps. Let me find a drop caps over there. Uh, we have Bible verses are highlighted specifically. I find one of those. So there's some verses. Actually, the Bible verses applies to like something in the line of the text. This guy here is going to be a, and I have a large Bible quote. I have a centered Bible quote, something I might use for more poetic-y type things. In this case, a Psalms. And then if I have some large block quote in here somewhere, it's going to be the large block quote. We have chapter quotes are uh, the what's at the beginning of each one of the chapters. So you can see this guy here. That should be a chapter quote. Not sure why it's uh, why it's not, but uh, anyway. Here's a case of a large quote. And then, of course, we have the footer left. We have the footer right. These are both applied over here. So we also have the character styles. I don't think I have any custom frame styles. Of course, all of our page styles are correct. Now, I don't need things like... You know, landscape is not used anywhere. So any of these that we can, uh, if they're custom, we can delete them. If they're not custom, then we just have to leave them the, the way that they are. But in general, if it's something there that uh, I don't necessarily need, I could delete it. You could just keep it around. So when we're talking about readying the template, just make sure that everything here is ready to go. So I know that this book is already in print. Book two of this series is also already in print. So I'm really not going to need to manage changing any 
of the other things. Now, the next thing we actually want to do is we want to be aware of where our template paths are going to be. And so under your tools and under options and down here under LibreOffice and paths, this will tell you where a lot of variety of things are. Now, pay attention to this one here, templates. This is going to define where things go when we create a template file. Now, on Linux here, by default, I actually had two lines here. The second one would drop it inside of my template folder. There was actually a little bit of a problem with that, and that is that when you right-click on Linux, create a new document, whatever's in that template folder will show up here, and I do not want those templates showing up in this context list. Uh, I'm pretty sure Windows and Mac, that will not be an issue, uh, but if it is, check if there's uh, something here. So I deleted the one, so just leaving the basic configuration file, so all of those templates will be stored in this path directory, so if I need to save them for later, look at them later, I can find them in this uh, path. In my case on this computer, I did have to change the setting. If you're on Windows and Mac, you probably will not have to. Just be aware that that is where those templates are going to be stored. All right, so now with the book open that we have, what I'm going to do is I want to create a styles template. And so to do this, we're going to go under our file find our templates, and then you can see open template, save as template, or manage. Of course, we're going to save as a template. Now we have my templates. I like going down and saving it under styles. It really doesn't matter which way because we're not, basically the template's gonna save all of the text in here as well. Um, but what I'm gonna do here is we're just gonna name it, uh, save it under a styles template, or I'm gonna call this uh, K O A. C, because this is the kings of all creation series, and I'm not going to set the default. However, if you did want to set a single default template, you can go ahead and tap on that, and that's going to save your defaults. Go ahead and save that document there, and now if you head on into our templates and hit manage templates, then it will be in here somewhere. Um, so down here, categories, you can see here's my kings of all creation template file. All right, so that is how you can create the file. We've gotten it ready. We've examined our paths. Now we created it. So now how do we apply it? Well, very simply, we are going to open up the document that we want to use. So in my case, we're just going to grab our draft of Synaptergy that we keep on working with. Now, I did not save any changes from before. As you can very clearly see, it's still 8.5 by 11, just basic generic uh, fonts, generic everything. But what we are going to do is we are going to apply that template. So we're going to come up to our styles, and then you can see over here, load styles down at the bottom. Clicking on the load styles, we're going to go down and find our template. So remember I put it under styles, kings of all creation. Now, right, right here, there's text styles will just import your text, which I believe is your character and your, um, and your paragraph. Then we have pages, of course we want that. Frames, numbering, and then the important one here is overwrite. If you do not select the overwrite, then it's going to import stuff, but if that style already exists, it's not going to change it. I'm going to show you what this looks like when we do not overwrite it first. So we're going to go ahead and hit this. So you can see that nothing changed in our document. Uh, and if I dig through this guy here, um, chapter number is a new item, but the chapter number is actually dependent on the heading. So nothing ever changed in that. If we look down through here, we can see our Bible quotes are here correctly. And you can see that our footers, uh, our footers did not change. Footer left, footer right did not change because again, those are defaults. So you'll be like, oh, nothing really changed. That kind of sucks. Well, the problem is we did not overwrite. So now we're going to go into our styles and now I'm going to show you what happens when you overwrite them. So now we're going to go ahead and make sure we have our style corrected. Now hit overwrite, push OK, and boom. Not only is our page styles are there, now our headings, fonts are in place. Everything that we need is now set up. We have our page, our footer left, we have our footer right, our header left, our header right. You can see our heading font is there, chapter numbers, headings. We can see that our quotations are all set. We have all of our different text where they need to be. 
Uh, of course, if we look at our page styles, you can have a look at the video we did specifically looking at the page styles. Uh, let's go ahead and view this guy here so we can see that everything is the five by the eight. My margins are exactly where I need them to be. Let me zoom up there so you can kind of see that the margins are pretty much what we need them to be uh, across the board. So you can kind of see here that uh, once we went ahead and applied that style, just make sure you overwrite it. Everything now is going to be working just right. So now you can create your first, uh, your first style list, make sure it's all perfect for your book, save that as a style, and now, now apply that styling across all of the books in your series to make sure that all of the books in your series have the same internal styling, all done with styling templates here on LibreOffice. So hopefully this video helped you to understand LibreOffice a little bit better. Maybe it helped you to empower your uh, producing your book. If it did so, definitely leave me a comment down below. Maybe, hey, leave a link to your book in the comment down below. I'm okay with that. Uh, feel free, especially if this video helped you to do that. That's, that's cool with me. Uh, so, of course, thanks for coming along on this video. You can have a look at the links in the description down below. You can subscribe to the channel. Uh, go ahead and hit me a... Uh, a thumbs up there on the video, and uh, I do have a Twitter account and a Mastodon account. Those are both linked in the description down there. So thanks for coming along, and I hope that this video has helped you to get your writing done right.